guys uh, again this is a uh, engineer mark anthony i would like to say uh, once again a blessed friday morning to all of the seven engineering students who are watching right now actually today's discussion we are going to proceed with regards to our previous topic in line with potable water line works actually our previous discussion we discussed primarily based on the lease of activity based on potable water line execution so Right now, we are going to discuss basically the details of each and every activity which will be done on site. So once all the paperwork has been approved and been uh, uh, finalized, so we can proceed right now with regards to site execution. So these are the list which uh, we had to execute on site. So one of the activity which we just want to include because it is not included in our previous discussion is the joint tracking work so it is very important so right now uh, this are the list once the paperwork has been established you can proceed right now with respect to site execution so survey setting out has been done and it is being checked by your uh, so the project survey team and verified by your project consultant you can proceed right now with respect to the execution works. So we just want to give you an example with regards to the potable water line works, pipe line works actually. Let's say for example, regardless of pipe diameter, so this is the cross-section detail. Let's say for example, this is your trench, so you already attain your final formation after the excavation work has been carried out. So the formation will be based only on your approved profile drawing. So it will be verified by your uh, project surveyor and reviewed by project consultant. So once you attain or achieve your final formation level, you can proceed with regards to the second activity which is the laying of the textile membrane. But before you are going to proceed with the secondary activity, you have to ensure that this is already being verified by your project surveyor and ensure that the tracks is clean before you go to lay your textile membrane in order to avoid damage to the geotextile material. So right now after you lay the geotextile membrane, actually the purpose of geotextile is just yeah, so that your aggregate materials will be protected and it will not be eroded when there is a presence of uh, groundwater on that vicinity or on that particular area of course. So we are going to proceed. This is now the geotextile membrane. So you are going after once you achieve right now your final formation after packing after you are going to hold that this trench. So but for the time being it is open because the activity is still on progress. So once you finalize you already laying the geotextile membrane you can proceed right now with regards to the bedding so this is your aggregate bedding materials which has to be laid on the trench. Normally the thickness for this will range between 150 mm to 200 mm. It depends on design requirements. So this aggregate bedding, there are two materials that has to be used. When your trench is located on high water table areas or on water log areas, you are going to use gabbro materials. Gabbro aggregates. But if your trench will not be subjected for high water table of there or there is no presence of groundwater, so you can use limestone aggregates. Gabbro aggregates or limestone aggregates. So the gradations based on international specifications, it will go within 0 to 4.76 mm. Aggregate C. So this is the requirement. So let's say for example 0 to 5 mm. And this is now your value materials. Once the top level of your building material has already been verified by your project survey team, you can proceed right now with regards to pipeline works. So this is now the laying of ductile iron pipes. But anyway, it depends on types of materials. So normally the pipes 
that has to be used is ductile iron. Now this is now your pipe. Once again, top level so by all the alignments, all the top level of pipe has to be very fine. Once it is already established, we can proceed right now with regards to the pressure testing activity. So you are going to subject right now the pipe based on specification standards. The it will be pressurized in order to ensure that there is no leak in the system. When there is a leak in the system, once this area was already backfilled, it is a labor intensive job. So it is prone to settlement later on if this area, there is a presence of leak in the portable water line uh, pipes. So once the pressure testing found satisfactory, you will get to pressurize your pipes. If the result is satisfactory within 24 hours, so you can proceed right now with regards to the joint traffic boards. So normally the pressure that has to be conducted is 1.25 times the working pressure, which will be subjected for 24 hours. Normally, the pressure will fluctuate, it depends on the site condition and also temperature, site temperature, because if you can see in the graph, it is fluctuating, if the pressure is high or rather the temperature is high, of course, the pressure, there is a ratio and proportion, so pressure is directly proportional to temperature, so normally, pressure is high, when the temperature is high. Pressure is low, there is a pressure drop. Pressure drop when the, pressure, the temperature is low, especially when it comes to cold season. So once you already completed and the pressure testing activity found to be satisfactory, you can proceed right now with respect to the joint wrapping works. And then you have to wrap your pipe Normally, the standard length of pipe is 6 meters. So, each and every connection you have to protect it carefully in order to avoid leaks. Let's say, for example, this is your pipe connections, socket and speaker. So, you have to wrap this carefully. You have to apply party. And you have to wrap it with wrapping materials. It depends on types of approval. What types of material being approved by your project and it will be used here for the joint. So once you've already completed in regards to the number six activity, you can proceed right now with regards to the flushing and swapping. So we have to ensure that there is no presence of any unsuitable materials inside the pipes before we are going to proceed for pipe disinfection. Otherwise, the pipe disinfection will not uh, will not get passed when there is a presence of any undesirable materials inside the pipes. So, plastic and swapping has to be carried out. You are going to flush and clean the pipe before you are going to proceed for pipe disinfection. So, right now, after the flushing has been done, you are going to flush out all this, any debris or anything which might be present inside the pipe. So, you can proceed right now for pipe disinfection. So, you are going to close the pipe, disinfect the pipes using chlorine or any other uh, disinfection agent. And after that, you are going to flush once again. Discharge the pipe, remove all the uh, chemical inside the pipe, clean it again, and then at the same time, that's the time that you can collect right now the water sample. So you have to collect the water sample and send to approved third party laboratory for uh, further analysis. So normally, when you're going to send sample to the laboratory, you have to let us in the pH for 10. 
I'm sorry, the pH value of water. And then at the same time, the TDS or known as the total dissolved solid and also any presence of undesirable bacteria. Let's say, for example, E. coli, etc. So normally, based on specification standards, the pH value which we're going to take is the pH value will range between 6.5 to 8.5 This is the pH value which we are going to achieve in order to ensure that the pipe or the presence of water which will pass through the pipe is satisfactory and also the TDS of the total dissolved solvent and the presence of bacteria must be none or zero this is the requirement. So, but the main activity or the main thing which you are going to achieve is this pH value. So, if the pH value is less, it is acidic. So, if the pH value is high, it is alkaline. So, which is not, which is not favorable when it comes to daily consumption. So once you already completed the pipe disinfection and the result on laboratory analysis found to be satisfactory, you can proceed right now with regards to pipe surroundings. So normally the standard thickness for the pipe protection for the surround aggregate is 300 mm. So you need to protect the trench, cover the trench. So now 300 mm above the pipe. Then at the same time, you can start laying out the warning tapes on top. Warning tape will serve as protection later on. If there is other contractor who will execute an excavation works, so they will see that there is a presence of any underground utilities, or let's say for some presence of line, uh, water line within this area. So it will give them the warning that they should not have to proceed the excavation because there is a presence of pressurized, uh, pressurized pipeline underneath. And then after that, you can proceed right now with regards to vacuum walls. So, vacuum walls will be done in layer 150 mm in thickness with respect to specification requirements which has to achieve a 95% maximum dry density compaction so once you establish that is now your final formation so let's say for example if the area is shallow you have to establish the concrete protection slab. Let's say for example concrete protection slab when the area is shallow. So bacteria works may proceed 15 layers or let's say for 15 cm in layers it must be tested by nuclear gauge or sun cone method in order to determine the compaction of 95% and you can proceed or the concrete protection slab if required or if not you can complete this by means of conventional back filling which is 15 cm in layers and then you attain the final uh, layer so that is for now so thank you very much for your time so this is once again the recap of the activity which with respect to potable water line works based on the part one of our topic so again recap the activities which we have to execute based on site application is with respect to potable water layoffs so basically on excavation the geotextile membrane lanes and then at the same time aggregate bedding laying of aggregate bedding and then at the same time the pipe lane works pressure testing activity joint trapping, brushing swabbing pipe disinfection pipe surround 
they of all the tapes. Protection stuff be required and not many force. So that is for now. Once again, this is Engineer Mark Anthony. I would like to say a blessed Friday morning once again to all of the civil engineering students. Have a nice day. See you on next time. Bye bye.